All right, my friends, here we go. Day one of a brand new project. If you don't know me, my name is Matt Reisinger. I'm a builder in Austin, Texas. I've been making YouTube videos since 2008, and I've made a lot of videos about construction, but I've never filmed an entire house start to finish. On this Build Original series in partnership with my friends at Builders First Source, we're gonna show you the entire build process on this house right here. It's gonna be a high performance house, for a family build on a little bit less of a budget than you've seen me build on in the past. Not only that, but we're gonna show the entire process start to finish. A build original series, the Reisinger build. Let's get going. A build original series in partnership with Builders First Source, the Reisinger build. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Thanks, Jacob. Guys, I am super excited about this project. This is gonna be super fun to take you through a 24 part series on how to build a fantastic house. And it all starts on this episode in pre-construction. You know, this planning phase is vital to building a really good house. It, it, for a good analogy, it sets the foundation for a really good house. And what we're doing on this video series is something I've never done before. We're gonna be utilizing some tools available to builders nationwide through Builders First Source that they call their digital tools. It's a suite of things that allow me to basically build the house on the computer and understand all the parts and pieces from the engineering to the ready frame package to the trusses, including all the mechanicals and how they integrate into the bones of the house. This is totally gonna change the game for builders across the country, and we're gonna document it and show you this process. By the way, this house is gonna be on the Build Show Live tour as well in November, so you'll get to come visit this house as well. So starting in this episode, episode one here, we're gonna lay the groundwork for what's happening, where the house is, what we're doing. Steve Basic is our architect, and as I said, we're gonna be utilizing a bunch of tools that we've never done before, that we've maybe had to pay multiple thousands of dollars to outside consultants to do, or super expensive architecture. But again, we're doing this on a much more modest budget. I think you're gonna find a new way of building a house that does it on a budget that you will be shocked you can do it for, plus the performance is gonna be through the roof. I mean, you know I'm passionate about changing the way we build houses in America. This is the video series that's gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, in this first part here, we're gonna meet Steve Basin, the architect. We're gonna show you what we've got, what we're building, and where we're building. With that being said, let's go find Steve Basic. Steve, how's it going, brother? Hey, buddy. So if you Always guys don't know Steve, amazing architect out of Boston, but works all over the country. Steve, you're really known for your high performance construction, not just great architecture. Talk to me about what you're thinking about when you come up to a lot like this. House is gone and we're designing a really cool house, but we want this to be a really high performance house. And I said earlier, we're looking for a house that's built on a bit of a budget compared to some of our past projects. Yeah, I mean, probably one of the very first things is to understand the fabric that's around us. Yeah. Right, the scale of the house is kind of the, the, the size of the homes here, the materials that are being used. Because we're going to come in here, we're going to put a house here, but we don't want it to be something totally different. We That's want right. the neighbors to be happy. We want these people to feel like they're part of the neighborhood when they move in. And so understanding the scale there and then kind of translating that understanding into, okay, what kind of level of performance are we going to talk here? What kind of price point are we at that... You know, we're probably not doing a passive house here, but we're not doing a code built house either. Sure. We're going to elevate some of those standards and get us a really good house. And let me add a little commentary to that. We're in Austin, Texas. We're in a city neighborhood. This was originally developed in the 1970s. There are a few newer homes and some whole house remodels. There's also some existing 70s houses around us. One and two stories, two to 3,000 square feet. So I'm assuming that's probably what you're thinking for this house as well. Yeah, this is probably a, a three bedroom, you know, two and a half bath, three bath. Um, you know, we have our two car garage. There's some things here that the site is kind of limiting us to yep. um, that we're not going to go crazy on. But 
I think it's important that we also look to what are what are some of the things that are good about houses. Like a lot of houses that we do now have an upstairs living room or hangout space for kids. Yeah. Right. We're, we're keeping the bedrooms a little small, but we're giving them a community space. That's right. And so I think, you know, these neighborhoods, this is a kind of a family friendly neighborhood where yeah. you'd assume this person probably has two or three kids that's going to move in here. That's right. So developing a house for that kind of family living. Yeah. Now you notice we took the old house down, so we're starting with this slab and we're leaving the slab. If you're not familiar with Texas construction, we don't have a frost line here, so right. we don't need to like, uh, you know, if we're building up in Boston, we're gonna dig a full basement because we've got a three foot frost line. We're trying to get below that to make sure we don't have heave. We don't have that here. We also have the issue in Texas of solid rock. If I were <laughs> to dig down Steve here another three, four inches, we would hit yeah. absolute rock. Uh, there are some parts in Texas that have a lot of clay, expansive clays. This neighborhood I, is very blessed with massive rock, which means as you look around at these houses in the neighborhood that have masonry fronts, brick fronts, rock fronts, no cracks visible at all, which means we've got real stable foundations such that this slab is a good starting point. And what's the reason we decided to kind of keep the slab and top it, Steve? Well, one of the other restrictions that Austin poses that is, and, and we do work all over the country, and this I find to be probably the mo one of the most restrictive things here is they treat these trees like gold. Yeah, right. Sure. These, these are, are the most important things to the city of Austin. Yes. Are these trees? So there are certain dimensions and you know radiuses that we can't operate within on these trees. That's right. And. I'll, some portions of the existing slab are already in conflict with that. Yep. And by keeping the slab allows us to maintain that conflict. Yeah. If we remove that slab, we would now have to conform to that. So the idea here is that we keep this slab, we add where we can mm -hmm. in kind of those spaces where the trees don't exist, and we'll pour a new slab there, but we'll come over the top of the existing slab probably to level this out and get it all cleaned up. So in other words, Steve, we'll go on top of this slab by maybe four inches. We'll talk to the engineer about yeah. what he wants. We'll reuse what we've got here as kind of a stable platform or base. We'll raise the elevation of the house by about four inches. And at this point, Steve, you're thinking we might push back maybe in this area here where we don't have Yeah, we have some void some there that we have some freedom from the trees. So, you know, getting some kind of space there that probably can interact with the backyard would be a good choice. That makes sense. Now we do have a setback here as well. We've got a 25 yeah. foot setback. So we're really not gonna be able to go much further we're out than much where we there. are now. Yeah. And the driveway location is nice and it seems to be in good shape. So yeah. we'll see what we can do in terms of keeping the driveway. Uh, it's gonna be really interesting, Steve, for you to take us to the next step and really figure out what the floor plan is. Ultimately, we're gonna put brand new plumbing and uh, water lines into the slab. Because it's a slab construction though, I personally wanna limit the amount of piping in the slab except for drain waste vent. Yep. So we're gonna try and maybe just come in with a water line and then everything else will get run overhead. Uh, but of course the sewer lines will have to go through the slab and those are good yep. for decades and decades and decades, no problem. I do have a concern with plumbing under the slab so we're gonna try and limit that wherever yeah. possible. One of the good things we have though that I always look for when I come out to projects is, you know, there's a lot of history in this slab already, yeah. 50 plus years, yeah. and it's still in really good shape. Yeah. Right? For there's sure. no giant cracks through the middle. So it's telling us that we're, like you said, on pretty stable ground. Yeah. And for my uh, building nerds out there, this is a rebar slab, not a post tension slab, which right. means that the rebar that's in place, if we cut something as we're coring the slab and putting new plumbing in, we can fix that no problem. Whereas this was a post tension slab we'd be really worried about hitting one of those tension cables and then the slab losing its structural integrity. Yeah. So that's a big benefit of this type of construction. It's also one of the reasons why I really like uh, houses that are new to use rebar rather than post-tension, even though post-tension is a, a fine system. Uh, it tends to be a little less expensive, but I like the rebar for the remodelability of it, which is always something, Steve, I'm interested in. Is, in 50 years and 100 years, if someone wants to remodel, can we do that? Is that gonna be possible and easy for them? Yeah, that, that post-tension system that you talk about, it's a very finite system that it's dependent on the integrity of that system as a whole for its life. Yeah. 
So you can't go in and modify it in any way. That's right. So something really exciting about this project, Steve, we're partnering with our friends at Builders First Source. And the plans and the details that Steve's developing for this house will actually be available for sale in their home plan library. And as we get into future episodes, you know, this is a 24 part series, Steve, we're really gonna be able to show the entire build process yeah. and start to finish. You know, some of these guys know us from uh, buildshownetwork.com or maybe some of my YouTube videos. They've seen us do some parts and pieces but I've never built a house start to finish on camera and recorded the whole thing. And to have your plans available for sale means that Steve can even develop a basement plan on this. So if you're interested when you get to the end of this series and actually building the same house, you could buy this plan set and you could even modify it with Builders First Source to customize it for your lot, your location and do some cool stuff. Stay tuned too, we're gonna be digitizing Steve's plans and Builders First Source is gonna be uh, doing some really interesting things that you've probably never seen before. And they're fairly common in the commercial world, very uncommon in the residential world in terms of being able to show the bones and the structure of the house. So stay tuned for future videos as we get into that. Yeah, you know, doing this for a while, I've, I've come to understand there's this giant gap between where we finish drawings and then when we go into construction. Mm -hmm. And there's some needs in there to coordinate a bunch of issues, efforts from HVAC, plumbers, structural integrity and all of that. And, you know, mentoring Builders First Source, I'm really excited because they have an idea that can fill that gap yeah, for sure. and, and bridge that gap between the end of what the architect does and the start of what construction companies do. So it's going to be a really interesting journey. Steve, I'm really excited to see what you come up with in the drawings for this house. This is going to be a really fun project. I can't wait for you guys to follow along. All right, y'all. Well, the rest of the team does the architecture, which I am no good at. I'm going to do the official groundbreaking, shall we? <laughs> you know, most of the time we have a big red ribbon. Uh, we got a gold shovel. No, we're the build show. It's black. Yep, it's nothing but rock under there. We got maybe a few inches of soil, and then we got nothing but rock. That makes me happy as a builder. That means this house ain't going anywhere. With that being said, stay tuned for episode two, guys. We're gonna be jumping in those digital tools. I'm gonna to introduce you to some of my friends at Builders First Source, and we're gonna meet Chelsea, the architect from my office, and Tim Hill, my business partner. We got some really good wisdom we're gonna be doling out in episode two. And again, it's that pre-construction that lays the foundation for a really well-built, a high-performance house on a modest budget. This is the Reisinger Build, a Build Original series. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.